If you know anything about college football, you know that Miami is still a national brand. They're still a big name in the college football realm. But after having won double-digit games only once since 2003, having a coach now entering year three with tons of talent, it's time for Mario Cristobal and the Canes to either put up or shut up. And I think most Miami fans agree with me on that. Now, Cristobal is 12-13 and 13 overall at Miami so far, but this year he boasts his best team on paper, and he has a legitimate Heisman contender in Cam Ward, the Washington State transfer at quarterback. The time for Miami is now. You see all that FSU lost from last year's undefeated team. Clemson looks to be fading somewhat or not them former selves, and they seem to have the fast track to the ACC title game. It seems the Canes haven't been relevant since forever, and for all the preseason hype, something seems to always go catastrophically wrong, whether it just not be taking a knee or just not showing up ready to play. This year, I think that changes. This Miami team is almost incorruptible from coaching because of the talent they have. And all joking aside, Mario Cristobal knows the game, all right? He has to be better managing the game. He can feel the urgency and understands that sometimes the best way to lead the way is just not to get in the way. College football is a lot more fun when the U is good and talking their ish. With that offensive line, plus Cam Ward, Damian Martinez at running back, and the riches they have out wide, this Canes offense should be more dangerous than Augustus Gloop standing next to a chocolate river. The defense is going to be just fine, even though they may not be as good as last year. And regardless of the outcome of game one in the swamp against Florida, everything Miami wants will still be there. And I expect for the first time in a long time, they're finally going to catch the hype. David Cohn, former Michigan quarterback, my brother, former Western State, Colorado wide receiver. Boys, it's ACC day. ACC time. And I, I tell you, I got done final, you know, finishing making my predictions last night, going through every game. And a, lo a lot of what I do is just like what y'all do and what y'all do at home. Do my research, got a good grasp on what I think the team's going to be. Week one is always the hardest to bet. But going through it, I feel, and I've got a couple surprises, I feel pretty good about it, but just the ACC overall, David, with the additions of SMU and Cal and Stanford, do you rank the ACC behind the Big 12 right now? Mm, uh, it's tough to say. My bigger question is, can one of these two conferences get multiple teams in the college football playoff? That's where I'm trying to square things right now. But look, I'm really excited for ACC football this year. Remember, Florida State undefeated last year. The criticism was, oh, well, you know, they, they, it was always a different criticism on why they can't make the college football playoff. Yeah. At first, it's, well, they don't play anyone. Okay, well, they were 2-0 and against SEC teams. They beat LSU pretty good in the opener. Then we got down to, oh, well, they're beat Florida. Now. Third street. Look, man, growing up, Second. like like you guys know, I grew up a Florida State fan, but also just looking at some of these Miami teams back in the day and like what Clemson's been able to do over the course of the last 10 years, and that doesn't even speak to how good I think NC State can be. Louisville, Virginia Tech is a proud football program. Let's see what Syracuse can do. So I'm really excited to see what the ACC can do this year, and maybe they only get one team. Maybe they only get that automatic qualifier into the college football playoff, but I think that we're in for a lot of fireworks. Blaine, if I could describe the ACC this year in one oh, word. Goodness. I think it is sneaky. Okay. Right? You look at Georgia Tech, which we're going to find out a little bit about this weekend. You look at Virginia Tech, mm -hmm. who I'm pretty high on. SMU coming in. Would you put right? Louisville in that group? I, I are, put are they still I, sneaky I, after last year? They won 10 games. I think they're still sneaky. I, I think the sneakiest thing about Louisville is how damn good they were on defense. I mean, they were top 21, I believe, total defense in the country. Ron they English. Number was. one in the ACC. It just feels like the only and thing. I think Tyler Shook is actually better. It just the only thing that feels like it's missing from the ACC is what? It's Miami. Like Miami, if Miami returns to what Miami was, I'm not saying winning national championships every other year, but a perennial, a perennial team, which Miami is, I think the ACC will be a damn good conference from top to bottom. And I think you could, I would probably right now take the Big 12 over the ACC, but if Miami returns to what Miami was, uh, I think the ACC could notch them a little bit. Well, it's going to be really interesting. Again, make sure you hit that subscribe button. We're almost to 150,000. We may be there already. I'm not sure. But remember, without you, there is no us. Phone lines are going to open 2.45 p.m. Central. It's 1-855-236-3228. So when you want to call and scream at us about our predictions, that's how you do it. But just start by screaming at David or Blaine and then get to me. No. All right. Let's go ahead and throw up my 2024 ACC predictions. And I know. What? I know. Y'all know us here. We don't, we're not into the, the clickbait list and all that. I've been talking about SMU for about the last four to five months and how much I really believe in this team. But let me go through just because you're on audio. I've got Miami 
beating SMU in the ACC championship game. All right, I've got both of them 11 and 1. I've got Miami 8 0 in the conference. I've got SMU 11 and 1, 7 and 1. I've got Clemson 10 and 2 overall, 7 and 1 in the conference. SMU makes the conference championship game because I have SMU beating Florida State and I have Clemson losing to Florida State. That would be the tiebreaker with head to head opponents because they didn't play each other. Uh, they're not going to play each other during the regular season. I've got Florida State at 9 and 3, 6 and 2. Virginia Tech 10 and 2, 6 and 2. NC State, 9 and 3, 6 and 2. Louisville, 8 and 4, 6 and 2. North Carolina, who's a very intriguing team that we're going to get to, 8 and 4, 5 and 3 overall. Then Georgia Tech, I got 6 and 6 with Boston College, 6 and 6. Both of them, 3 and 5 in the conference, even though that doesn't describe how good I think Georgia Tech's going to be. I got Pitt at 5 and 7, Duke at 5 and 7, Pitt at 3 and 5 in the league, Duke at 2 and 6 in the league, Cal at 5 and 7, 2 and 6, Wake at 5 and 7, 2 and 6, Syracuse, sorry, Cuse mode. Four and eight, one and seven in the league. Stanford, three and nine overall, one and seven in the league. And then Virginia, unfortunately, two and ten. And I got him 0 for go for 0 for eight in the league. So, so who's SMU losing to? I've got SMU losing at Louisville. So here's what I got for SMU. And, and I, I want to talk about them for a second just to explain why I picked this. All right, and people say, oh, this is a reach. Oh, it's a reach. It, it's really not when you look at the schedule and then you look at what they have. And, and I want to start with SMU's defense, which I don't think gets enough credit. Right, They made some additions in the transfer portal. I like they returned, I think, eight of their top tacklers off a defense that was pretty good that should be even better. But offensively, yes, you lost your offensive coordinator. But that's okay. I'm not worried about the offense as long as Rhett Lashley's there. Preston Stone, I think, is a hell of a quarterback. I don't think he gets talked about enough. He can throw it. He can run it. I feel good about their offensive line. They got a couple studs coming back. They did a good job in the portal around them. On the defensive line, they did a good job in the portal. But when you look at R.J. Maryland, a tight end enough people aren't talking about. They're going to be talking about him here pretty soon. And then you look at who they brought in at wide receiver along with returning uh, the running game they had last year. SMU goes to Nevada week one. I got it a win. Holy Cross week two, win. BYU week three at home, win. TCU week four at home, win. And then Florida State comes to town week five. I think they'll both be undefeated. I've got SMU winning that one in a shocker. Then I've got them losing the game right after that because they're going to be on a high at Louisville, who's very capable, and then winning out at Stanford, at Duke, Pitt at home, BC at home, UVA on the road, and Cal at home. The back end of the schedule, guys, once they get past Louisville, is very, very favorable. If they can find a way to go 5-1 and one through that first six, I think they're 11-1 and one overall, and they lose to Miami in the ACC championship. Okay, which makes them 11-2, and two, which means do you have them in the college football playoff? That's We're going to do our playoff Friday. Once we get done with all the conferences, I'm going to look back at it and see how it would work for the tiebreakers and who I think they would pick. Okay, so your only loss for Miami is in the opener against Florida. Right now I have Miami losing to Florida and then winning out. And then who are your two losses? is for Clemson. I guess you have them losing to Georgia. Yep, I've got Clemson losing to Georgia. And then let me flip back right here. Must have them losing. I've got Clemson NC losing State. at Florida State. At Florida State. Okay, so you haven't beaten South Carolina at the end of the I've game. Got, I've, got, I've got Clemson only losing to Georgia and at Florida State. I've got them beating Louisville at home, Virginia Tech on the road. i got them beating so South Carolina at the end of the year. And NC State at home uh, in game Okay, three. so hold on one second. How does... How does SMU... Because SMU beats Florida college. State, Clemson loses to Florida State. When you look at the way the ACC okay. tiebreakers are, it starts out like it should with head-to-head, -head, did you play each other? And then head-to-head -head versus common opponents, which takes your best common opponent to the top. In this case, it would be okay. Florida State. So you have SMU beating Florida State, Clemson losing to Florida State, yep. even and though that's they only what, have one conference loss. Yep, and that's Clemson what gets left out. So then Clemson's going to be sitting there at 10 and 2 yeah. with yeah. making a loud argument for the playoff. As well, well, this is something that this is what we've talked about a lot with this playoff. People are saying, well, sometimes playing in the conference championship game may not be as advantageous. Do you penalize? That's what I'm interested to see with the committee. Are you going to penalize teams for losing the conference championship game? Because you go back to yesterday with our Big 12 predictions, David. You know, I had Utah playing Oklahoma State, but Kansas State is sitting right up there, too, at 10-2, and two, not playing in the conference championship game. Uh, and obviously, we know that Kansas State and Oklahoma State play each other. So mm -hmm. it's the tiebreakers are going to get a little wonky. Who are the three losses for NC State? Oh, that's a good question. This was another one I struggled with. Do I trust Grayson McCall to stay healthy? That's a question. I've got, I've got NC State losing to Tennessee, okay. Clemson on the road, and at Georgia Tech. Mm -hmm. uh, I have Tech going that as well. I've, yep, I've, I've got Georgia well. Tech, which again, I, I don't, 
this will be a regression from last year, but I think they'll end up having a better team. The schedule is just harder. I have Georgia Tech barely losing to Florida State, losing at Louisville, losing at North Carolina, losing at Virginia Tech, to Miami at home, and then at Georgia. Are you worried was that? at all that when it comes to SMU, every Power 5 opponent they played last year, they lost? Does that yeah. worry you at all when they come into a Power 5 conference? Well, it gives me it gives me a little bit of pause. I, I take the bowl game out from last year against Boston College because they played it, I believe, at Fenway. The weather was awful. They had a, a decent amount of guys not playing. I think when I look at SMU, if we're going to sit here and say – all right, Power Five teams. If they were, if their schedule was a little bit different, I wouldn't have this. But they get BYU at home. Mm-hmm. You get TCU at home. You get Florida State at home. I got you losing to Louisville. You go to Stanford and to Duke. Yes, those are two Power Five Winnable teams. Games. Duke has a new coach, new quarterback, new quarterback in Malik Murphy, which we're going to see. Stanford and Troy Taylor. I'm rooting for him out there. That Colorado game was crazy last year, but they're pretty bad up front. Uh, then after Duke, you get Pitt at home, which should be winnable. Boston College is actually somewhat scary to me. I got Boston College at 6 and 6. When you look at this Boston College team, when you look at Morales, who's North Carolina's all-time uh touchdown uh reception leader uh, at tight end coming in with some of the pieces they have with Bill O'Brien, Castellanos, if you can figure out can be scary. Back, yeah. Uh then you got at Virginia and Cal at home. Yeah, I, I'm not as worried because I think this team, one, is going to be better than the team last year that experienced that. And then the schedule, I think, bears out pretty well, even though, obviously, they're in a Power Four power four conference. Is Florida State the only ranked opponent on their schedule? Right now, I believe, we'll see with Louisville by the time they get there. They've got Louisville in the sixth game. So, at that time, Louisville could possibly be ranked. 11. So, who are the three losses for, for Florida State? For Florida State, I've got losing at SMU, at Miami, and at Notre Dame. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Um, bring mine up, please. Bring my graphic up. I also have Miami winning the ACC, which would be the first time that they've ever done that. I have them at, le- at 11 and 1 as well, but I have it different. What do you say? I was gonna, who's your Miami loss? To Florida. 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 Yes. Wow. I have them beating Florida in the okay. opener. Okay. Okay. Which wouldn't surprise me if they go to Gainesville and lose. But I do have them picking up a loss right now on the road at Louisville. But eleven and one, seven and one in the conference. Florida State ten and two. They play Florida State in a rematch in the conference. Kind of like I had in the Big Twelve. And I have Miami winning twice. Clemson nine and three. Uh, NC State nine and three. One thing we keep talking about with NC State, I think they're going to be a really good football team. And we keep talking about the health of Grayson McCall. One thing to consider, though, he clearly benefited from playing playing in a Jamie Chadwell system in Coastal Carolina because even in instances where he was healthy, the completion percentage came down, the yardage came down, the touchdowns came down, and the interceptions went up when he wasn't playing for Jamie Chadwell. I want to see how he gets back on track now playing at NC State. Louisville, look, like you said, are they going to be a surprise after what they did last year? Last year was kind of the surprise, punching above their weight all season long. Look, I played for Ron English. He was a defensive coordinator at Michigan when I was there. What a job last year. I think they're going to be that that physical again this season. I have them at nine and three, six and two in the conference. Virginia Tech, nine and three right now, and SMU at nine and three as well. Um, I think with SMU, if if they go eleven and one and they play in the conference championship, that's going to be a heck of a pick, and I would love that for Rhett Lashley. I don't know another sports personality that's going to have SMU in the ACC championship. So if that happens, I think you should take a bunch of victory laps. And for you know a me, long, man. Long I'm not reading. I I tried to talk myself out of this four times last night. I get it. And I kept looking, and I was like, man, I can't do it. The Florida State game obviously worries me. Uh, no, I get it. Um, I just to me, I tried to build in some losses. You're coming into a power conference for the first time, even with a favorable schedule you're still going to have to play both teams that appeared in the ACC championship a year ago. And I have them losing both of those games. That's Florida State and Louisville. And then I built in another loss on the road at Duke. We'll see. We'll get to Duke in just a second. Uh, Georgia Tech, 7-5 and five right now. Yeah. Which would you know, be a good year. Yeah. I, I know people yeah. are fired up, but that schedule is way different. The schedule is very, very difficult. Even 6-6, six and six, I think, would be a win. Right now, the the uh, their um, projected win total is 5 even. So 6-6 six and six making a bowl game would overperform that. I have seven and five right now. I hated that our boy Jeff Collins couldn't uh, get it done there at Georgia Tech, but he's now the defensive coordinator at North Carolina. I have them punching above their over-under win total uh, projection right now at eight and four. Seven and five for Syracuse. 
Um, really? Look, yeah, seven and five right now. I think Fran Brown's going to come in and do good things, and I still think Kyle McCord's a heck of a quarterback. The quarterback wasn't what was holding them back before. I mean, even in the Dino Babers years when he had Garrett Schrader at quarterback, seven and five was mm. kind of their record. So, look, we'll have to see exactly how he performs in year one. Six and six uh, right now for Duke. Manny Diaz coming in. They get Malik Murphy transferring in, which he just got officially named the starting quarterback. So, which so does Lenore Sellers for us. South Carolina. Yeah. Uh, Pitt, five and seven. I think you have him at five and seven as well. Yeah, so overperforming thing. last season, but yeah. still underperforming what I think many Pitt fans. Don't worry. BYU fans have taken over the anger. At oh, yeah. It's always someone last year, every year. But Pitt, I mean, we were right. Like, I'm sorry. Like, I'm, I Someone has to win and lose right. the football games, right? Uh, yeah. uh, Wake Forest, four and eight. Boston College, four and eight. I think Boston College is going to be better than four and eight, but just the the checks and the X's, like down the you know down the stretch. This is just how I have it going right now. Let's see what Bill O'Brien can do in year one. Cal four and eight, Virginia three and nine, Stanford three and nine. This is one of the things that is a little bit different from the ACC and the other conferences we talk about. Is that the teams coming in? Now, granted, you have SMU playing in the conference championship, but you know the the new additions to the conference. I see. Uh, ending up at the bottom a little bit more so than the other conferences we talk about with, you know, Oregon and and Washington, Southern Cal coming into the Big Ten and Texas, Oklahoma coming into the SEC. But those are my projections right now. And I just want to give a quick game by game breakdown for Miami, who I am going to have winning the conference. So right now, on the road at Florida, week one, going to be one of the, the most anticipated college football games of the season. I have them winning that game. Florida A&M, win. Uh, Ball State, win. South Florida, win. Virginia Tech, win. Cal, win. I have them losing on the road against Louisville, who played in the ACC okay. championship a year ago. Florida State, win. Duke, win. Georgia Tech, win. Wake Forest, win. Syracuse, win. Rematch against Florida State in the ACC championship. I have Miami winning the conference, getting that automatic bid into the 12 team college football playoff. Miami, listen up. It's time. It's time for you to be the Miami I grew up watching. Those were Big East teams. I get that. You never won the ACC. It is time to change that, return the Miami Hurricane standard to what it was in the players that I grew up watching. We'll see if Mario Cristobal can make it happen. Let, let, let me ask you this. Who do you have Florida State Clemson? Okay, I have Florida State winning that game, and it's at home. Okay. All right. Does, and I, does Florida play, State play NC State? Uh, they they do. do not. Okay. Uh, so. What I'm interested to see here is when it comes down to playoff time. So if Miami wins the ACC, beats Florida State twice, that would make Florida State ten and three. Mm -hmm. Clemson would be nine and three, right? But you have Florida State beating Clemson. They don't play NC State. So if we're looking at a team getting in the playoff outside of Miami, it would have to be Florida State, right? Yeah, and I have a I have the exact same scenario right now in the Big 12 where my conference champion in the ACC and the Big 12 picks up their third loss in the conference championship, which I think it's going to make it more difficult to make the playoff so, in that scenario. So I, I, I don't think that's crazy. So you think I'm the only person that's going to have SMU in the ACC championship? I was wondering I how many... Other I think now so. someone like else that. will. I mean, I mean, again, I'm looking, guys. Again, just tell like Florida State, Louisville. Okay, I get, I get those those two. I would not be shocked if you. At Duke scares me, David. I agree with that. They're just so they lost two. Duke lost two NFL offensive linemen last year. I don't think they're going to be the same up front. I have a hard time trusting Manny Diaz. I just Nevada. I know Jeff Choate's the new coach out there. They're god awful, even though they got Chuba Purdy coming in from Florida State, who. Didn't do a ton, even with the guys they had up front last year. Holy what about Cross, TCU. You win. TCU worries me a little bit. Well, every, I mean, Power Four team should worry you if you're SMU. I mean, you haven't proved well, you can beat Well, I mean, one. I mean, yeah, but like, what? Who is? If better you said than that I had to play yeah. a group of them, if you said I had to play six in a row, this would Stanford, be a great group. Stanford, Duke, yeah. Pitt, Boston College, Virginia, and Cal's That's not what I'm terrible draw. And by that time, <laughs> if you're sitting there and it works out the way I think at the beginning, even if you lose to Florida State. Or if you split one of FSU and Louisville. If you told Rhett Lashley right now you would split one of FSU and Louisville, I think he'd probably take that and then roll the dice on the rest of them. What I like is SMU has depth. Like, this isn't a this isn't a team that comes out and they're like, hey, this is our surface level. We're really good here, but behind we have nothing. I love what they did to the transfer portal, getting guys in on the defensive line from, like, Arkansas and Georgia and West Virginia and places like that. I'm just telling you, man, I, I, I think SMU, it may be 10-2, 
right? It may be 10 and two, six and two, and, and they don't get in because Florida State beats them. But I think they get to double digits. And I want to say Bet Online had the over under wins total at like nine and a half for us. It is eight and a half. It's eight and a half. Yeah. I'd smash um, the hell out of All right. Like so we both, during... we both have Miami winning the conference yep. and the championship. So what do you have? Who's your, who's your three losses at Clemson? Clemson? All right, I have Clemson losing to Georgia in the opener. Mm -hmm. I have Clemson losing on the road against Florida State, and I have Clemson losing on the road against Virginia Tech. And that's where things get really interesting. I, I, I'm starting to worry that maybe I have um, overrated Virginia Tech a little bit at nine and three, and maybe underrated Boston College a bit uh, at four and eight. But again, I just go through and I check and X every single football yep. game and then add it up. And right now, I'm, I'm giving Clemson a loss on the road. Well, I hope you didn't overrate Virginia Tech at 93 because it's exactly what I have. And Matt, go ahead and bring my schedule up. Guess what, guys? I guess we're all drinking the Kool-Aid. I have Miami mm. winning the championship. Well, look, we don't sit here and tell each other what no, we're going to uh, at, well, at one point, Mario Cristobal has to get out of the way of his own team winning a natty. And I think this year could be the year. Clemson 10-2, 7-1. NC State 10-2, 7-1 in conference. Florida State 9-3, 6-2 in conference. SMU. Nine and three, six and two. Virginia Tech nine and three. Louisville eight and four. Mm. North Carolina nine and three. Wow, Florida that'd be Tech, a huge year for Matt. Seven and five. Syracuse eight and four, baby. Frank. So y'all are drink. Both of y'all are wow. drinking this. Believe in it, Cal. Right. Not great. I Pitt don't. five and seven. Wake Forest five and seven. Duke four and eight. Boston College. I don't believe three and nine. Stanford three and nine. Virginia. It's tough. It's so tough for me not to pick uh, at least win one. At conference least win game. one. Doesn't it hurts me on the inside yeah. to fill this out, but it's the truth. I don't think they're going to win one. Give me your questions. Give me your takes. Give me your analysis. What do you think? Uh, well, we're, we're all seemingly high on Virginia Tech. I had Virginia Tech at 10 and 2. Uh, and, okay. And, okay, that's and right. Who do you have them losing to? Yeah, I've got Virginia Tech losing at Miami and against Clemson at home in what is going to be a devastating loss because at that point, they're going to be sitting there at like 9 and 1 or something. See, I even Jeez. gave them a win in that game. So who do you have them losing? I have them the same. I have them losing at Miami. I have them losing on the road at Syracuse, and then I have them wow. losing that Rutgers game right now out of conference. You got them losing the Rutgers game. I do hey, too. Rutgers is going to beat people. We talked about this just last week. I, I, Rutgers I is going to beat someone. They're going to beat somebody we're not mm -hmm. thinking of. I think it could be this Virginia well, Tech. Well, could Rutgers be the Virginia Tech of the Big Ten? That's the question. I tell you what, that opening game against Vanderbilt, I don't think it's going to be a walk in the park either no. because of what they brought in. Diego Pavia bringing in Jerry Kill to help out a little bit. That New Mexico State and Coach Lee is a good coach. I, I think they're going to win, but I'm telling you, with Virginia Tech, Kyron jo Drones seems like he's somewhat figured it out at the end of the year. They ended on a good note. They returned, I mean, damn near everybody that mattered offensively. Mm -hmm. But defensively, I think this Virginia Tech team once again, maybe overachieve it in the word because last year I, d I do, do think they overachieved uh, compared to what people thought they were going to do. But I love what they're doing defensively. And it's this schedule. I mean, look, you, yeah, you got Miami on the road. All right, you get Clemson at home. Outside of that, when it comes to conference, you go to Stanford, you get BC at home, you get Georgia Tech at home, you go to Syracuse, you go to Duke, and you get Virginia at home. This is basketball, I'd be a whole hell of a lot more worried. But it's not. <laughs> so when I look at this Virginia Tech team, I think double-digit wins is very, very doable, but you got to go undefeated in the non-conference, and mm -hmm. that's going to Vandy, you get Marshall at home, you go to Old Dominion, and then you get Rutgers at home. If you're able to navigate those waters, uh, then I think 10 wins is very doable. All right, so NC State for you, you got them 10 and 2 right now. Mm -hmm. So do you have them beating Tennessee no. in week two? They lose to Tennessee and they lose to Clemson. They lose to Tennessee and Clemson. Then after that, they run the table. Correct. Okay. I have them losing on the road at Georgia Tech. Do, right? So y'all have them both beating North Carolina at the end of the year on the road too. I got them uh, beating North Carolina. I, I have them beating North Carolina and because that game is at home. For, well, actually, hold on, hold on. That game is at... No, that game is at uh, NC State. I believe. I thought it was. No, a, hold on. That game yeah, is in North a, Carolina. It's in North Carolina. Yeah, correct. Uh, I, I, North Carolina, Matt <laughs> Johnson, right, going there to play yeah. quarterback. They lose Tez Brooks, right, but they actually returned their leading pass catcher from last year because Tez was hurt. I love what they have at tight end. They've got two of the most dynamic tight ends. Offensive line, we're going to see that, you know, the run game was good last year. They returned Amari and Hampton, their running back, I, I believe, who, you know, had a really good year. It's defensively where North Carolina's got to get better. Yeah. And hopefully that's where our buddy Jeff, Jeff Collins, Collins man. can come in. I mean, they got ran through like a finish line last year. They, if they can fix it on defense, 9-3 and three is very doable. I know Drake May's not there anymore, but Max Johnson, he's a guy that's kind of a steady Eddie. He can move. He's a left-hander. Uh, I'm interested to see how North Carolina looks on defense because they may not be as good as they have been on offense, 
but they may be better on defense, therefore leading to a better team. We call that a little bit of LSU. Yeah. I know Jeff Collins is working hard because I got a text message from this morning at 5 a.m. on the dot. Yeah, he's I texted him yesterday. Jacked up. It's te- yeah, he's jacked up, man. We're talking about the huddle up segment that's going to be coming back, so I know he's working hard. Um, you got him nine and three. Yeah, you really believe? See, I I am eight and four and still punching well, above that uh, eight and four, nine and three. They're going to task it. Yeah, why are y'all so high on Syracuse? Fran Brown, baby, I believe her. I know, but Kyle Fran, Bra- Fran Brown's still ass seven ain't and playing five. Playing it's that. not like I have them playing in the conference. No, I, I know, but like, all right, so so Blaine, all right, mm. you got them eight wins. Eight wins, Tell baby. Tell me that eight wins for Syracuse. Ohio, okay, Stanford, Holy Cross, okay. UNLV, Pittsburgh, Boston College, Cal, and Connecticut. That's not crazy. Is that eight, really? Yeah. Man. They lose to Georgia Tech, okay. NC State, Virginia well, Tech. First off, that game, it don't don't sleep on UNLV. Okay, so I have no, Pitt. Hey, I, I'm not sleeping on anybody. I have right? Pitt beating them. Okay. So the same as you, but Pitt, I have yeah. Pitt winning. It's the same thing schedule-wise. That's not crazy to see eight wins on Syracuse schedule. I just look at their team. and I mean, it, typically, no. But And listen, I know Robert and I, it's, it's going to be another year in this offense. You're bringing in Kyle McCord who doesn't run it really well. I know Fran Brown and them have done pretty good in the transport. I just don't think they have enough depth. I don't think they have enough depth right now. Uh, Okay, so quickly, did you say who you have? Clemson? You have Clemson? Clemson losing to Georgia and Virginia Tech. No, I'm talking about the championship game, though, in the ACC championship game. ACC championship out of Miami winning. But do you have them beating who? Clemson in a rematch? Clemson, yes, correct. Because you have Clemson Clemson beating Florida State? So You have the Florida State-Clemson game. So the way that— I have Clemson winning. The Florida State game. Okay. You have Clemson winning the Yeah, Florida State I have Florida State, State so. losing Miami, Clemson. See, because Clemson, so Blaine's right. So Clemson doesn't play NC and Notre State. Dame. Clemson doesn't play NC mm-hmm. State. But does NC State play Florida State? That's the question. Uh, NC State. NC State plays play Clemson. State. NC State doesn't play Clemson. Yeah, they do. Yes, NC they do. State plays they Clemson okay, on good. the road. Easy, perfect. Then, then it's a hard Yeah, it's yeah, over. Yeah, yeah. So. Okay, good. Now I have Clemson winning that game. Okay, so what about Notre Dame? Because Notre Dame's quasi ACC, and we yeah, got. Yeah, we're going to get to the chat in one second. I promise. So we need to get this. Thank you for reminding me again about Notre Dame. Here's what I got. All right, You're I got right. Notre Dame going nine and three and missing the playoff. Nine and three. I got all right. Nine what three. are they? I got them losing at A and M week one. Okay. Right. I got them losing at Georgia Tech, and then I got Lincoln Riley and then beating them last game of the season. Lincoln to salvage. Mm. To salvage a year and give a little hope going. A on. little bit of hope. How about you for Notre? Ten Dame? and two. Ten and two. Ten and two. I got them losing to Texas A&M week one. Okay. Close game. I think A&M squeezes that one out. And I also have them losing at USC. At the really? Yeah. Really so nine and three, ten and two. Y'all are gonna hate mine. D, you better not be eleven and one. Eleven and oh, one. Dang. Eleven oh, and one. Right. I got them beating Texas A&M in We're the opener. I'm, I'm buying that. it on the Kool Aid. Running, running the whole schedule. All the way to the end. You got to lose it. Lose it on the road at Dude, SC. Finally, <laughs> all three as have much trash. Because they'll go into that. If that's the case, they'll Lincoln go into Riley. that game favored for sure. Yeah. If, but still, rivalry game is still going to be a lot of fun. That'll be the de facto and conference the, champion. Well, the and then at that point, Who David, do we play? David, if you're right, this adds a little more credence to that. I mean, that may be a game, be a game where Notre Dame's sitting there. We're 11 and And they're already in. Already yeah. in the playoff, yeah. I was thinking about no that. conference championship game. Hey, not that we don't go out there and play hard, but... Look, we're not dead yet, Yeah. right? You don't fight as hard until you know you're going to be dead at the end of it. So none of us have Florida State going on the road to South Bend and beating Notre Dame. I've got Notre Dame winning that game. I don't have Florida State winning a big game. Hmm. Like I I went back and forth. I mean, don't forget, Notre Dame has to play Louisville at home. Mm -hmm. right? That's not going to be a walk in the park. That game at Georgia Tech, though, fellas. But it's not a true road game. This is what's fascinating. It's, it's in Mercedes. About, it's, in it's, in Mercedes. A, it's in Atlanta, so technically, uh, it, it'll be it'll be it'll feel like a home game for uh, for Georgia Tech. But Notre Dame travels so well. I mean, here's what's interesting: they go on the road for not just a true road game in Texas A&M, but one of the greatest college football environments in College Station. Without then it. they play a true road game at Purdue Week Three. After that. They don't play another true road game until they get to USC because Army, Navy, Georgia Tech, a lot of neutral neutral. sites and baseball stadiums and such. Well, those are ours. We want yours. Hey, what's up, YouTube? For the best college football, NFL breakdowns, bets, and everything else, make sure you're subscribed to Crane & Company. Proof's in the pudding, man. Let's make money together.